Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of today's guests, including Jason Strudwick, standing by, brought to you by Delaney's OK Tire in Langley. In business for over 20 plus years, OK Tire is Canadian owned and operated from coast to coast. Clayton and Brett Delaney, second generation owners, and they handle all the major tire brands as well as custom wheels and suspension, leveling kits and lifts and full mechanical services. Visit them at 19863 Fraser Highway in Langley. Canucks in Edmonton uh, tomorrow to play the Oilers to start a five-game road trip in the wake of their 8-1 season opening victory over the Oilers on Wednesday. And here to talk about it is the aforementioned Jason Strudwick from the Got Your Back uh, podcast with Ryan Rashog. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for doing this. How are you, sir? I'm great. I'm great. How are you guys making out? Very well. We understand that you're painting today, uh, painting a, a room in your house. What's the situation? Yeah, there? yeah. I'm not an artist. No, I've got, we've got this property and, you know, someone moved out. So I, I love painting. I don't know what it is. You know, it's obviously my hands were elite when I played yes. and there's continue to be <laughs> so uh, with the paintbrush and uh, very soft hands. I don't need to tape. I just cut it so tight. Uh, I love painting. I, so I put a podcast on or listen to some uh, Frank Sinatra and I get her done. Mm -hmm. You know what? It, you just took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, ask tape or no tape. Yeah. No tape. That's impressive, Jason. No tape. Okay. Tight. Wow. Tight. I get I get high quality brushes, and mm -hmm. you go cheap. You're gonna have a a, a loose uh, line. I keep it tight with nice nice brushes, and it's no problem. Thanks for the advice. Yes. You're hired, by the way. Next time I need to be in a room, I'll pay for uh, for the yeah. flight from Edmonton the whole bit. Hey. <laughs> uh, the reaction in Edmonton to what happened Wednesday in Vancouver, an eight one loss. Uh, to the Canucks, can you give 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 us an idea what the reaction was or is? Well, from the fans' perspective, it's over. The season's over. <laughs> yeah. uh, May as well just shut it down. Eighty-one games to go. We're done. We've got to trade while we can get to anything. Trade ninety-seven and twenty-nine. Hope to get some kind of assets back is what uh, the fans want. So I would say it's. I would say in overarching, it's a overreaction for everybody in this situation. Um, it's game 80, 82. It was the first game. I believe that'll be the worst game of the year. It was absolutely horrendous. Full marks to the Canucks. They look so fast. They mm -hmm. outwork the Oilers. More often than not, they were on the inside of the Oilers all over the ice. That includes in front of both nets. The Oilers were able to make Brock Besser look like a Rick Tockett. Absolute <laughs> warrior out there. Battling for the pucks, getting on the inside position. So the Oilers were not ready. I'd said it heading into the through the uh, preseason. They were they were not pushing themselves. And you go through the lineup, very few guys did, and they got a major wake up call. It's not a lesson learned. It's a wake up call that every team is gunning for people or for the team that people think can win the Stanley Cup. Vancouver didn't want to be embarrassed, and I love the Canucks game. Really good game by them. So what do you expect from the Oilers at home, home opener, on Saturday? Well, I think they got to compete. You know, it's, it, people get upset, oh, well, Jay Woodcroft didn't do this, didn't do that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You, you need to have players that are willing to compete all over the ice. And the Oilers just didn't have enough of those guys. Um, I thought the Oilers' third line, Fogel and, and, and company, they had a good, a good game. But the D-men were getting beat off the wall. They were getting uh, beat off two-on-ones. Um, you know, the, the forwards not back-checking hard enough. Uh, Canucks moving quicker, not defending quick enough by the Oilers. Like, you name it, they didn't do it. So the good thing is it's only one game, and really it's a, it's a really good reminder of how hard you have to play in the NHL. Uh, they do miss Ekholm, but you can win games without Matthias Ekholm. If you can't win games without one defenseman, you've got a, a bigger problem than that. So I expect this team, the Oilers, that is, to compete much, much harder because – it was embarrassing, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's embarrassing to watch it, but as a player, I've been in those games. You can't wait to play mm -hmm. a game again because you are so embarrassed of your performance. Hey, Jason, we don't know what to expect from the Canucks uh, this season. Uh, we were blown away with the, just a super effort by them. You mentioned Besser, but was there anybody else that stood out from you, stood out for you from the Vancouver side? Well. Over, overall, the speed. I didn't think the Oilers, or sorry, the Canucks had that much speed. I thought they looked really fast. Now, part of that can be, and this is going to sound like unfair to Canucks, but 
part of it can be the product of the system. I thought the or the Canucks really moved the puck quickly, and I thought they were on the on on their toes, getting into the forecheck quickly, not giving the Oilers defense a lot of time. Um, a guy that I don't think will surprise a lot was Pedersen. Really showed a lot. His shot is uh, elite, elite relief. Um, he's still got to find ways to score other ways than just off one timers. But I think that he he's an, he is an elite player and someone I, I go to watch him play. And the D surprised me. No Carson Soucy, their yep. D moved the puck quickly. They're they're not a group other than I'd say Quinn Hughes that really needs to have the puck on their stick. Uh, and, and that's not a slight, but it's a reality. Your job is to defend quickly, move it up to those skilled forwards so they can get on their horses and get up the, the ice. So those three areas, I think, were really – the D were definitely a surprise. So was the speed. Pedersen, not so much. We know what he can do. Okay, I imagine the goaltenders are getting some heat. Uh, uh, Jason in Edmonton, what did you think of uh, Campbell and Skinner? I, I, you know, if you're evaluating owners' goalies, Based on that, it's kind of like if your house is on fire, you're wondering if you left the toilet seat up. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you, you have no idea what they are. I, I think that the goalies weren't the problem in that game. Uh, you look at some of the, the goals that were scored of the eight, maybe you could ask them to get one or two. But the team did not compete good enough in front of them. I believe we'll see Stuart Skinner in the pipes uh, oh, Saturday. Skinner. I think that both, both guys will be fine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I... I I'm not sure they'd even be on the list uh, of where my concern was if I was Jay Woodcroft. Talking with Jason Strudwick, Canucks and Oilers again uh, Saturday, this time in Edmonton. Uh, you touched on this at the start of this interview, Jason. What does a successful season look like for the Edmonton Oilers, Wednesday aside? A lot of people want to focus on points and, what, and who you know how many points the Oilers end up with. And I, I, I think that's... Uh, kind of the sexy thing to talk about. What I want to see a successful season through 82 games would be a, a much better defensive awareness from the owners for 82 games, both five on five and on the penalty kill. I think last year they ended up 17th for goals against. Uh, I'd like to see that climb into the top 10. And I, I think their power play or penalty kill is around 20th. Um, so both of those I think need to climb. Uh, now, do you have to get them in the top 10? I, I would like to. I, that'd be a goal I'd set. It's going to be hard after the first game performance to turn that around, but you got to start somewhere. Um, but that's that's what I'm looking at because we know this team is going to make. Well, I assume everyone assumes they're going to make the playoffs, but their goal is to win in the playoffs. You can't win the playoffs without a very determined uh, approach to playing defense. They're still going to score a lot to goal, mm. and they had that. They had that. I thought uh, about 25 games left last year, 30 games to go. Then they got against Vegas and a really good team who also has the same approach, and they got away from it. So you can't just turn that on and off. You have to build that all season. So that's what I want to see. When we look at the numbers for power play, penalty kill and five-on-five five or, or goals against overall, I want to see that climb. If they do that, that's a successful year. Jason, three years left on Connor McDavid's contract, a couple of years left on Leon Dreisaitl's uh, contract. What, what, what's the sense of urgency in, in Edmonton when it comes to it comes to those two deals for those two superstars? Ken Hall, I think, said it best when he arrived. He said, my job is to improve the, the team every year. And I think he's done that. You know, you look at last year bringing an home, this year bringing in Connor Brown. I believe they'll add another top four defenseman at or near the trade deadline. And they'll have a, a full team, right? A full team uh, that's kind of filled out and ready to compete at the highest levels. You know, you, 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 it's on the back burner, but there's nothing that, even if they wanted to, Leon and Connor can't sign new contracts right now. The owners have to continue to grow this team, continue to add assets throughout the organization, continue to draft, develop all those things so that it's a place you want to play because you know that it's going forward for, for a number of years, and that's how you keep those guys. So, um, I think the fans, everyone's aware of it. And I mean, Connor and Leon spoke openly about it. I don't think bringing in Jeff Jackson, his former agent, Connor's former agent, hurts anything. I think that was a very smart move, not just for that, but I think he's a smart hockey guy, and he's looking at doing things differently for a, a, a new insight from what's been going on. So a lot of positive things happen here at Edmonton. I know the first game didn't go the, the way they wanted, but a lot of positive things here happening, and that's how you keep superstars. Look at what happened in uh, Winnipeg. Look what happened in Toronto, and I expect probably the same thing to happen there in Vancouver with uh, old EP40, as they mm. call them out west. Uh, back to painting, okay, Jason? 
Yeah, if you guys need any quotes, just uh, look me up on Twitter. I'll come and do it for you guys. And it's it's good to know, and I agree with you, it's good to know you're a paintbrush snob. Yeah. There's your advice for today. No tape and spend money on those brushes. Don't cheap out. Thank you for that. Don't and thank you for this. Cheap. Don't go to Dollarama. Don't go to Dollarama. <laughs> Get expensive ones. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. Have Big a good time. day, guys.